Hello guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about my Team USA 2019 World Junior Championships roster predictions. Now we're one month away from the 2019 World Junior Championships hosted in Vancouver, British Columbia, and Team USA once again is looking to be a very good team and cont to contend for that gold medal this year. So that begs the question, which players will be in this tournament for Team USA, and what will their roster actually look like? Now just bear in mind of this, the first episode of the mini-series where I look at the big competitors in the World Junior Championships. I'm going to be predicting the rosters and of course the players on the teams. Now this is for Team USA for this video, but later down the line I will do Canada, I will do Russia, I will do Finland, and I will do Sweden, and maybe some other countries, but the, really the big ones will be covered on the channel. Now, just a little bit of a ground rules before we get into the lines and the projections for Team USA in the World Junior Championships. When it comes to the eligibility of players, the players have to be under age 20 to qualify. So that means any players that are age 20 or older will not be able to participate in the World Junior Championships. Now also keep in mind that any league and any players from any league are eligible for this tournament. That means that players can be sent down to the World Junior Championships if they want to do so. We saw that last year with Victor Mete. He wasn't sent down or anything, but he played the World Junior Championships and was right back with the NHL squad. And that can happen to a lot of players throughout the rosters that I make for these videos, whether it be Team USA, Canada, or etc. There will be players that will be made available by their teams at least going up to the World Junior Championships, so there will be players that are available that I won't be able to cover in this video and will not be able to project in this video. Now in this video, I'll be going through the potential lines that we'll see and the potential players that we'll see. I'll be going through the four forward lines, the extra forwards, the defensive lines, the extra defensemen, the goaltending, and we'll, just for a little bit of bonus, we'll go through the power play one and penalty kill one two. So when I was picking together these lines and putting players together, I was very fascinated by how much depth Team USA has this season. Of course, with all the players in the USDP, they really have a lot of possibilities when it comes to players from really all different leagues. Now we're going to start with the forwards, and for the first line for Team USA, I'm going to have Jason Robertson on left wing, Jack Hughes at center, and I'm going to have Arthur Kaliev on the right side. Now this line has a lot of different possibilities. When we look at Team USA, you practically have to put Jack Hughes as that first center on that team. So that's the obvious lock there. When you have the two other wingers there, I can see a lot of different options, but I did a sack, or I did confirm that I think that Jeff Robertson will be on the left side and Kaliev will be on the right side. The main reason I picked those two, we'll start with Robertson. So far in the OHL, of course the Dallas Stars prospect, he's been almost a goal per game in the OHL for the first 24 games I think he's played. He's only 19 years old, of course the Dallas Stars prospect, I'm pretty high on him, and he's played amazing so far in the OHL, and he's really showing what he can be made of. And I think having Jack Hughes alongside of, of, of Robertson can set up a lot of goals. I think having Robertson, the goal scorer on the line, will really work out for both Jack Hughes and Robertson. Robertson and even Kaliev on that right side. And having Arthur Kaliev on that right side, I think will do a lot of wonders for that line to have a lot of flexibility. Arthur Kaliev has been one of the more interesting prospects throughout the year. I feel like he is overrated, but he has put himself into that top 15 conversation at least. And so far in the OHL, he's been straight fantastic. Earlier in the year, he had tons of goals, but now he's starting to rack up the assists. And I have, feel like having Robertson, the goal scorer on that left side, Jack Hughes, the playmaker on that center position, and having Kaliev, the guy that could do a lot of different things, will work out very well for that first line and I feel like that first line will score a bunch of goals throughout the whole tournament. Now for line number two, I'm going to nickname it the college line, and I think this line has loads of potential to not just be a shutdown type line, to be, but to get a lot of goals too. Now, on the left side, you start with Joel Barabee. On the center position, you have Josh Norris, who's a property of the Ottawa Senators, and you got Brandon Cruz, who is a Vegas goal night pick. I think he was fifth round back in 2017, but it comes down to it. This second line has a lot of potential, and I, didn't even, I have never even heard of Brandon Cruz until I researched this video, but he's been doing amazing so far in the NCAA and has been getting a ton of points, and he's looking pretty, pretty solid as an offensive threat. And of course, you got Josh Norris, who was traded in the air at Carlson Trade, and now for Ottawa, he's really starting to develop in the NCAA and starting to really rack up these points, and I think his defensive end is one of his stronger points, but now he's starting to get the points on the board in the NCAA, which is super scary for not just other teams in this tournament, but other teams in general. 
My only complaint of this line is Joel Verby on that left side. He's only gotten six points in 11 games, and while he has played lesser games than some other players, he is still young, but I want to see more scoring from him than what he sh has shown in the NCAA. So that's why I'm kind of skeptical, because I'm not sure Joel Verby will get the second line opportunity that he would if he was scoring more points and scoring more goals. But I feel like this line could definitely work. You'd have Joel Verby with a little bit of physicality on that second line. Josh Norris, that could really be defensive stalwart as, as well as picking up the points. And you got Brandon Cruz, has, who has really risen up the draft or the stock in the last year due to his play in the NCAA. And while I am calling at the college line, I think just in general, this is a very solid line that as a second line could do a lot of different things for Team USA. For line number three for Team USA forwards, I have Trevor Zegras on the left side, I have uh, Brian Poling at the center, and I have uh, Matthew Boldy on the right wing. Now, this line, I think, also has a ton of potential and could be even better in general than the second line that I have in Team USA. Now, this line, of course, Trevor Zegras and uh, Matthew Boldy are both USDP players. They've both been fantastic so far this season. Zegras has been amazing. I think he's number two behind Jack Hughes for that U.S. development team team, and for Matthew Boldy, he's been scoring a ton of goals in the USDP, and has really impressed me as well. I think he's a top 15 prospect, and Trevor Zegras also, I think, is a top 15 prospect. So when it comes down to it, the USA has a great third line there, and of course you got Ryan Poling, who is no scrub whatsoever either. Now, what makes this line interesting is that Ryan Poling was the or was the captain for Team USA for the U18 team back in the Holinka Gretzky Cup earlier this year, and I feel like when it comes down to it, Ryan Poling is a is a lot more older than some of these players on this team, but I feel like he already has that leadership quality to the guy, and as a third line center, he's shown a lot of offense so far in the NCAA, and having that dynamic guy that can also bring some defense. Again, Josh Norris and Ryan Poling are pretty similar, but I feel like Josh, Josh Norris has that. Edge, but Ryan Poling is no slouch too, and I feel like he can bring a lot, especially with Boldy and Degris on his wings. Now onto the fourth line, and for the fourth line, I have Judd Caulfield on the left wing, Evan Barrett up center, and Cole Caulfield on the right side. Now when it comes to this line, for fourth lines, I usually like to have balanced attack, both defensive players and offensive players, and this line definitely checks out. Now, I think one of the most interesting players on this entire team is Evan Barrett. Now, he is a 19-year-old. He was drafted in the third round in 2017 with Chicago Blackhawks. And so far in the NCAA, he's leading the entire NCAA in points. Now, he has played a couple more games than I think the number two guy. But as a 19-year-old, that is fantastic. And having him as the fourth-line center, if he can contribute points like he has in the NCAA, watch out for Team USA's center depth. Because if he's only the fourth-line center, scoring as much as he is in the NCAA, I'm really, really excited to see what he's able to do in the World Junior Championships and if he's able to prove himself as the offensive threat that he has in the NCAA. Now for the wingers on this line, you have two guys that have very, very similar last names. Caulfield, or Cofield, has what, zero L's, and Caulfield, of course, has one. So when I was looking in this video, I thought they were brothers for some reason, but I didn't see the L on Judd Caulfield. So they're not brothers. They're not related. They're just two very, very similar names. But hey, they're two very, very good players, as both of them have been producing amazingly in the USDP, and have both been really offensive threats throughout the last year. Now, going on to the extra forwards, I first have Alexander Cheflevsky. Now, he was a San Jose Sharks pick. I think he was like six or six round, I think, a couple years ago. He's a very solid prospect, and he's been playing very, very solidly in the OHL. He also got Mark Kastelik. He is a Cal he's a Calgary hitman in the OHL. He's their captain, and he's been playing pretty solidly offensively. I don't think he's signed with any team, so that may be a little bit of a problem, but I feel like he's also been playing pretty decent and I think he might deserve a World Junior Championship spot. Now on to the defense and man this is going to be a fun defensive core to just watch throughout the whole tournament. Now, for the first defensive pair, this is an absolutely lethal one. And for the first defensive pair, I have Cam York on the left side and Quinn Hughes on the right side. Man, that's going to be so fun to watch throughout the whole tournament. Cam York, I think, is a fringe top 15 prospect. He has been a great so far in the USDP as defenseman, racking up a lot of points, and he's been pretty solid. I think as an offensive player, he can definitely contribute a lot 
lot. And of course, you got Quinn Hughes, which has everything has already been said about him. He's an offensive dynamic player so far. I think he's been a, pretty much a point per game in the Dancy Double A. He's been straight fantastic. And for the Vancouver Canucks, they want him to be the future of the defense core. And those Wolves and Jamie Chips playing with his brother in Jack Hughes. That pairing is just going to be absolutely lethal. And of course, having Jack Hughes and uh, Quinn Hughes just going together back and forth is going to be so much fun to watch throughout the whole tournament. Now for the second defense line, this one ain't bad either at all. And now at the left side, I have Keandre Miller, the New York Rangers prospect. And on the right side, I have Bodie Wild, the New York Islanders prospect. And this one, of course, you got the two New York prospects right there, which I think was kind of a coincidence when I was making this. But I feel like this one has a lot of potential to not just be a shutdown line, to, but also get some more points in there. And Keandre Miller is also a pretty dynamic offensive guy. We've seen that so far in the NCAA. Now, uh, Bodie Wild has been great in the OHL, and with New York Islanders, he's looking to be one of the guys for that future of that defense, and I feel like that duo of Keontra Miller and Bodie Wild will be a strong connection that I think will work throughout the whole tournament there. Now, for the third defensive line, this is where it kind of goes down a little bit when it comes to the overall talent level. But this third line, or this third pairing, is also pretty solid. Now, the first guy is Henry Frun, who I'd never even heard of before this video, but he's been killing it in the last couple of weeks in the USDP and has been racking up a ton of points as a defenseman. So I thought in the next couple of weeks he'll also continue that, and he might get a job in the World Junior Championships, which would be a great story to see. Now, on the right side, you have Wyatt Wiley, who is a Philadelphia Flyers prospect. I think he was drafted fifth overall a couple of years ago, but so far in the WHL, he's been also very, very good. For the extra defenseman, I first have Alex Vlasic. Now, I think he's one of the more well-known defense uh, prospects on this on this defense core, and he's one of the guys that'll probably be a first-round pick in the 2019 NHL draft, but I think he just missed out on the opportunity since in the last couple of weeks, he's been a little bit more of a slower producer. Now, the other guy I have is Max Gildon uh, of the Florida Panthers. He was a third-round pick, I think, a year ago, and he's been amazing so far in the NCAA. He's been a point per game in 11 games, and he, of course, is a Texas born player, so I gotta represent him a little bit, but so far he's been amazing, and I think he just will barely get a spot in the World Junior Championships to play, and maybe we'll start a couple of games. Now, for last but not least, I have the goaltenders. Now, this is really interesting because USA has been developing goaltenders pretty rapidly in the last few years, and this year we have a lot of different goaltenders that could get this job, but I narrowed it down to three for your guys' convenience. Now, for the guy that I think will get the starting job for this real, for this year's World Junior Championships, I think it will be Spencer Knight. Now, he is the starting goaltender for the U.S. Development League, so that means that he gets a little bit of an advantage. But so far, he's been amazing in the stats, and of course, these stats definitely back him up. He's been great, and I'm really excited to see what he can do. Now, right now, by a lot of people, he's pegged as a first-round pick slash late-round pick, which is pretty high for goaltenders. So, right now, he has a lot of stock to his name, and hopefully, he can really produce in the World Junior Championships. And for the extra goalie, I have Caden Primu from the Montreal Canadiens, a Montreal Canadiens prospect. Now, in the NCAA so far this season, he's been pretty solid. The last season, though, he was absolutely godly, but this season, it's not been as good. He's still a pretty solid goaltender prospect, and he's still definitely up there, but right now, I'm not sure if he gets that starter job over guys like Spencer Knight. Now, just for a little bit of a bonus round, and just for a little bit of fun, let's look at the penalty kill and the power play lines, and man, this power play is going to be fun, fun to watch. I know I've said that a lot in this video, but this is going to be an exciting power play. Now, for the first power play, I think I have a mixture of that first line. I think we'll continue on that power play. It'll be Robertson, Hughes, and Kaliev. No surprise there, but on the defense, it does shake up a little bit. I have Ke'Andre Miller and Quinn Hughes. Ke'Andre Miller has a history of being a quarterback on that power play, and I think he can definitely use that onto this power play. And let's be honest, that power play is absolutely stacked, especially when you put Quinn Hughes on there. Now for the first penalty kill on the team, I have a combination of two players. Now for the first penalty kill, for the forwards, I have Josh Norris and I have Ryan Poling. Of course, Josh Norris being the second center on my projections and Ryan Poling might be my third center on my projections. But both of those guys have a lot of defensive prowess and both of those guys I think can be leaders on a penalty kill. And I like that duo right there. I think it'll do a lot of wonders and while the team being shorthanded, I think these two players will bail out a lot of different penalty kills. 
But for now, for that first penalty kill, I'm going back to the first defensive pairing, having Cam York and Quinn Hughes back together. Maybe I would have York on that second power play, but for the penalty kill, I have the first pairing back together and back together to really, really do a lot of wonders. Quinn Hughes, obviously, being the best defenseman on the team, he's going to do a lot of different things, and he's going to be a really a defensive guy out there, and might even be the best defenseman in this entire World Junior Championship. So he's going to be great, both in the penalty kill and penalty kill, and overall, Quinn Hughes on that penalty kill is just going to be dynamic every single time. But overall, this roster for USA has a ton of potential and has a ton of guys that will not just be drafted in the first round in 2019, but will also have very successful NHL careers. And a lot of these guys I'm very high on. So right now, I feel like this World Junior Championships team should contend for the gold medal. And that's the key word there, should, as right now, they're really in a great spot. And of course, this tournament being in Vancouver, being in, in BC, Canada, this is a big opportunity for the USA team to hold the gold medal on Canadian soil, which would dissatisfy a lot of Canadian fans, but will be amazing for Team USA. And of course, me being an American, I would love to see that happen. And of course, Canada winning the gold medal last year, USA wants to get a little bit of revenge and get back to where they want to. And of course, where they want to go is that gold medal game and to win that gold medal game. But with this team, they have the strength, they have the talent, they have the players, everything is there and everything is perfect for them, but it's all up to the players to produce, it's all up to the players to get it done, and of course last year they had an amazing team, they were really one of the favorites to win the gold medal, they disappointed in the long run, but this year is another opportunity for a lot of those guys that were in last year to get it done and to finally get that gold medal, which of course is what all those guys want. But of course, whether USA wins this or not, it's going to be a fun tournament to watch with a lot of different teams. Of course, with this USA team, it's going to be so, so fun to watch. Guys like Jack Hughes, Quinn Hughes, guys like Jason Robertson really, really fly. And I feel like this is a big opportunity for, of course, a lot of those 2019 NHL prospects to make names for themselves. And of course, with the USA team, they have a lot of solid prospects that will really play out in the NHL in the future. Well, with this mini-series, as the World Junior Championships approaches, I think the first game is on is on December 26th, so pretty much right after Christmas. So this mini-series will trickle out little by little. We'll get to Canada, we'll get to Sweden, we'll get to Russia, we'll get to Finland, and etc. And, of course, a lot of these teams are going to be super, super fun to cover, and I hope you enjoyed the videos coming. But of course, with this video, I want to hear from you guys. So what do you think about the lines that I assembled in this video? Do you agree with them? Were there some players I forgot that you want to tell me about? Do you think there should be players that are included that I didn't include in this roster video? Let me know what you think about the rosters, and of course, let me know what you think of the lines for Team USA. But of course, if you want some more prospect goodness from you, you can watch this video where I talk about Carter Hart and if we should continue to worry about him. But that is going for it, guys. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you haven't already. Again, tell me down below your thoughts on my roster and what you think about Team USA heading into the 2019 World Junior Championships. And I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Goodbye.